No. Must be. And have you recorded? Can you give me a countdown, Gary? Or have you? Okay. Well, hey, this is live. Good morning, church. Hello, everybody whose cameras are on. And even if your camera isn't on, I pretend I can see you and I'm waving to you. Good morning, church. Yeah, we wave to each other. We're really happy and excited to be gathered this morning over Zoom. Amazing. And I can see there are at least there are 29 different users right now, but that's way more people because there's families and all that stuff like that. So we're just so happy that we can gather kids and parents, youth and young adults all together this morning to worship God. Uh, just as a reminder, we are recording this uh, for posting later on YouTube. And um, yeah, with that said, let's begin by praying. Holy Spirit, we just invite you this morning to come. Come in our homes here at church with the volunteers and the people who are leading this morning. Be with us wherever we are. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you can be all of these places at the same time and that we can gather together and worship you. So God, would you be with us? Would you show us your love this morning? Help us to feel your presence. We pray in your name. Amen. And we're going to start by singing Waymaker. And I know it's tomorrow is Labor Day. And for many of us, school is starting really soon. And some of you might be feeling really nervous about that. Some of you might be feeling super excited about it. No matter how you're feeling, I want you to know, and we're going to declare as we sing this song, that God is the one who makes a way. So let's sing it. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, working in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, moving. You are here. Moving in our midst, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are here. You are here. Touching every heart, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, healing every heart, I worship you, I worship you. Turning lives, you are here. Turning lives around, I worship you, I worship you. You are here, mending every heart, I worship you, yeah, I worship you. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We sing you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. 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 That is 
is who you are. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Oh, you never stop. Oh, oh, oh. you are the miracle worker, Lord. You are risen, Lord. You are worthy. We worship you. Oh, 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 you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, Lord. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Oh, you keep your promises, Lord. That is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. That is who you are. You are good, Lord. You are loving. You are kind. Cause that is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. 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 You are light to the world. That is who you are. You shine in the darkness, Lord. We welcome you in our homes. We welcome you in our hearts, oh Lord. We welcome you. We welcome you this morning, Lord. Because that is who you are. 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 Amen. God, we declare that you are all of these things and so much more. We worship you and we praise you, God. We praise you this morning. We praise you in our homes as we gather together on Zoom. Well, church. We want to introduce to you what may be a new song for some of you. It's called The Father's House. And I know you can't hear each other singing because that would be really weird with all those echo and lag effects. But we're going to still teach it to you as if we were all together. Okay, so imagine that you're in church with everybody. We're going to do this sort of uh, teach you a couple of lines at a time. And we're going to do a bit of repeating the verse and the chorus. Uh, and I uh, hope that you will be blessed by this song called The Father's House, which reminds us that God is the one who carries our burdens, who lifts us up. Actually, let's start off with the chorus. It goes like this. Uh. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father. Check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Let's sing that again. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in 
the Father's house. Check your shame at the door, because it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Oh. Capo. We're singing it a little bit low. I apologize. Thank you, Athen. <laughs> So this is the verse. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. Let's start that again. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father's in. My story, my story isn't over, my story's just begun. Failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. So, oh, failure won't define me, cause that. And we're gonna sing the chorus now. Oh, lay your burdens down. Oh, here in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Oh, you're in the Father's house. You get the hang of it? And guess what? Even though you're not here in church, the Father is with you because the Holy Spirit is with you. And so the Father's house is actually wherever you are. So let's sing. Arrival's not the end game, the journey's where you are. You never want a perfect, you just want in my heart. And the story isn't over, the story isn't good. Cause failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Failure's never final when the Father's in the room. Oh, lay your burdens down. Oh, here in the Father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Oh, you're in the Father's Prodigals come home, the helpless find hope. Love is on the move, and the father's in the room. Prison doors fling wide, the dead come to life. Oh, love is on the move, when the father's in the room. Miracles take place. The cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Jericho walls, Jericho walls are quaking. Strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Oh, love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Oh, Lay your burdens down Ooh, Here in the Father's house Check your shame at the door Cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, Here in the Father's house Prodigals come Oh, 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 oh. The help the 
it's fine. Ho, oh, boom, prison door sling wide. The dead come to life. Love is on the move when the father's in the room. Miracles, miracles take place. The cynical find faith. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Jericho walls are quaking. Strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. shame at the door cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the father's house Ooh, lay your burdens down Ooh, here in the father's house check your shame at the door Cause it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, You're in the Father's house Amen Lord, we thank you that your house is with us Because Holy Spirit, you make your dwelling in our hearts Now we're going to say together our offertory sentence Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. Malachi 3.10. If you would like to make an offering, a gift to the church, we Welcome you to check out the link there, richmondemmanuelchurch.org slash give. You can give through PayPal, or if you would prefer to give through check, you can either drop it off at our mailbox or mail it to the church. You see the address there. You can also find that on our website. Uh, we are blessed by all that God has given us, and we want to respond to him by giving back out of the generosity of our hearts. Next slide, please. Oh, there's a lag. I apologize. There we go. Well, church, we're going to share the peace of the Lord. So I want to invite you. We're going to uh, let everybody unmute right now. And if you want to turn on your camera so we can see each other, let's just wave greet each other, wave high, and say everybody. peace to everybody. Peace. 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 There's so many people. Peace. 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 Peace, everybody. This will be a All right. Okay. Man, I want to shout out all your names, but there's so many of you. <laughs> that is going wild. Yeah. Well, we're just so blessed and we're so happy to see everybody here. That's crazy. There's like 30, there's like 36 different users on. That's so awesome. All right. 42? I can't, I can't do math. 42. Wow. And there's like multiple people at each one and us here wow <clears throat> it's so cool to be able to see everybody well we have a few announcements our first announcement has been this one that we've been updating everybody about um with regards to to the phase four you know having live worship on zoom we're doing it everybody we've made it uh we're also figuring out some health and safety stuff in preparation for when we reopen. We acknowledge and we recognize that it's not going to be easy for us to reopen, especially <laughs> right now when cases are going up and they're quite worried about the flu season. So uh, don't, don't pin your hopes on it happening very, very soon. But we do want to be prepared for when it's safe for us to regather, to be able to disinfect and all that kind of stuff. We really want to be able to see each other in person. But this is really cool to be able to see you on Zoom. I mean, even I can see you because we have a monitor pointing towards us. So it's really fun for us to be able to see that. Next slide, please. The AGM is happening next Sunday on Zoom. Uh, if you have not yet registered and you are a member of the church, 
Uh, if you don't know what it means to be a member, you probably aren't one. And if you would like to, you can definitely approach us and we would love to chat with you about that. But um, for those of you who are members, please, there is a Google form link that we could send at some point to you or you can message Iggy or myself and we could pass that Google form link. We do need you to pre-register so that we can filter everybody coming through that Zoom call. That will be next Sunday from 2 to 3.30 p.m. Uh, what's the next? Oh, Kids Connect. REC Kids Connect. So, uh, sorry, kids, it didn't really exactly work out today for Kids Connect. We're going to have special Kids Connect again next Sunday at 1030 because at 1045, I mean, today was the first day as well. So it was a bit chaotic. We were figuring things out. But next week, we feel like if we start at 1030, that'll give you time to hang out in a breakout room. We'll, we'll set you guys up and you guys can connect with each other. So next week will be the second Sunday. So grades four to seven, we'll be having REC Kids Connect at 1030. Everybody else, you're still welcome to join 1045. Uh, we'll be just sort of hanging out um, and chatting and stuff like that before service, kind of like on a Sunday morning. Next slide. Oh, it's, I think children's prayer group first. Wednesday, if you would like to join, um, 3.30 is the pre-kindergarten, 4.30 is elementary. Please talk to Anna or Iggy about that if you would like to join or talk to your parents and ask them to contact Pastor Iggy or Anna. Next slide is youth group. We have virtual, kind of like normal. Uh, so see you then, hope to see you. Um, and the young adults groups. We would love for you to connect with us on Monday or Friday with Vance's group or with Gary's group. So please do connect. We are actually... Oh, we forgot to include a slide about this, but we are hoping to launch sometime later on either the third or fourth week of September. We're going to be launching a course called Reframe. Uh, Reframe is a course offered. Uh, it's a free video course, 10 weeks. It's similar to Alpha, but like not Alpha. It's offered through Regent College. And yeah, it's about reframing and, and rethinking our faith. And so we would love for you, if you haven't really connected with one of our young adults groups, please do chat and uh, connect with us. Contact Vance or Gary. Talk to me. Uh, we would love for you to connect in. Uh, we'll get you the specific dates of when that launch is really soon. All right. Uh, Iggy, do you want to make this announcement? Because I don't actually know that much about it. Hey, everyone. So if you haven't uh, been able to hear about this in the past few weeks, it's that we are actually part of the Anglican Church family all around the world. And so this is about, we've been sending relief assistance to the Anglican Church of Congo. And it's because, because of COVID, there's a lot of issues going on there. And there has been civil unrest in that country. Congo is in Africa. Uh, you know, kids, Africa is very big, right? But a large part of Africa, Congo, to which our church is also related to, they have a lot of issues. So you've seen the pictures there. Um, there are refugee camps. That means people who have uh, been displaced from their homes, they are in refugee camps with the churches. And there's also a food uh, distribution you see in the other picture. And so the churches there are very active in helping feed and care and educate, provide school education for the children there. And so our church has supported by uh, donating a 10,000 US dollars to the Congo church. And then in the past few weeks, we've also uh, said, if anyone wants to give to support them, they can give to the Benet Benevolent fund in our church, and we've raised already over four thousand uh, dollars for them, which is amazing. So thank you for your generosity. If it's your first time hearing about it and you feel moved by God to give and support uh, to the families in Africa, then you can give to our church in the benevolent fund, or just put B fund, B for boy. You could put that. Uh, so that's uh, the assistance to the Anglican Church of Congo. Okay, I think we have one more announcement. Oh yeah, so our. Now, uh, Anglican Mission in Canada is having our summit 2020. It was supposed to be held over in, uh, in Cedar Springs in the States, but obviously under the circumstances, we can't travel there. So we will be having a one-day virtual summit on Saturday, September the 26th. Our guest speaker is uh, Dr. Daryl Johnson. He's a really great preacher and teacher, and he's going to be talking about raising and releasing planters. And so if you would like to join, there is a registration website on the Anglican Mission website. The Anglican Mission website is T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-E-T-H-
if you want to see something bigger or smaller, you can make things, you can slide things around. So if you, if you like can't see the PowerPoint or if you want to see Uncle Iggy or Pastor Iggy <laughs> better when he's preaching, you can move some stuff around, you can slide it and you can make it bigger and smaller. Just try some stuff out. If you can't read stuff, um, just encourage you to figure things out that way. Okay, let's say together the Apostles' Creed, which reminds us of our faith and tells us the bigger story of the Bible. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we are going to invite Emma to read the gospel for us. Here's the here the hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. If your brother or sister sins against you, go to them. Tell them what they did wrong. Keep it between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them back. But what if they don't listen to you? Then take one or two others with you. Scripture says, Every matter must be proved by the words of two or three witnesses. But what if they also refuse to listen to the witnesses? Then tell it to the church. And what if they refuse to listen even to the church? Then don't treat them as a brother or sister. Treat them as you would treat an ungodly person or a tax collector. What I'm about to tell you is true. What you lock on earth will be locked in heaven. What you unlock on earth will be unlocked in heaven. Again, here is what I tell you. Suppose two of you on earth agree about anything you could ask anything you ask for. My Father in heaven will do it for you. Where two or three people gather in my name, I am there with them. Praise to you, O oh Christ. Amen. Thank you, Emma, for reading the gospel. It's so exciting now that we can involve different people to read and to pray. And so in the coming weeks, we'll be asking children, youth, families, if you'd like to be on a rotation to read. It's just so great to hear the word of God being proclaimed from our homes. So now as we receive God's word today, let's pray together. Father, we thank you for the gift of family, that we are in the Father's house today, that in all our homes all over the greater Vancouver, you are here with us. And this is Abba's house. So we thank you, Abba, that you call us your own children, that you are the God who comforts your children. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So church, it is so exciting to be here, to be together in a sense. We're being here together in a new season. It's the fall season. Maybe you've come back from your summer camping trip. Maybe you've done a lot of new things this year. And now September is a new season. There are new challenges ahead, and we want to turn to God because we know there are challenges. And today we're talking about the God who is a God of comfort and suffering. Did you know that God is a comforter? That he's the one who comforts us when we get nervous or sad? I think about a lot of us, maybe when we are children, when you sleep, do you get a little bit nervous at night sometimes? I knew a, a family member, a relative, who when they were a, a child, they would always hug on to, I don't know, he called it a huggy, just basically like a long pillow, and he would comfort himself by hugging that. It's not Athen, by the way, if you're wondering. It's somebody else. Uh, but he would hug that to comfort himself. Do you guys do that to comfort yourself when you sleep? Uh, and maybe for our adults, we have different ways of comforting ourselves. Today, God is telling us he's the one who comforts us. Because we're entering into a new series in 2 Corinthians. Uh, and this is a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth. He wrote, well, here's a pop quiz for you. Do you know how many letters Paul wrote to the Corinthian church? Some of you may say in the chat, two letters. Because he wrote 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. 
But actually, Paul actually wrote at least four letters to the Corinthian church. Two of them are actually lost. And if you read through these books, you'll find out Paul has written a lot to the church. And there was a lot of sadness in the church because of, of arguments with some people. And suffering was very big in the church there. Did you know at the time, Paul was the apostle who would spread the gospel, but it wasn't easy. In this letter, the two major themes are God comforts us, but God also allows us to have suffering. You see in the church there, there are a lot of people who said, hey, we don't want to listen to Paul anymore. There are new teachers who came to the Corinthian church and said, don't listen to Paul. This guy, he suffers. He gets beaten up. He gets arrested. Don't trust him. And so Paul was writing this letter to say, actually, God is the God who comforts us, but he's also the God of suffering. And when we go through this letter in the next uh, few weeks, you'll see it's okay to suffer. It's okay to have a hard time. Just because we're having a hard time does not mean that God is not with us. In fact, you think about Jesus. Wasn't he the one who suffered for us? Praise be to Jesus that he is that kind of God. Let's go to the next slide. And I am just have a scripture up there. If you have your Bible or your phone or your tablet, you can open up your Bible to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Uh, because I'm not going to have all the scripture on the screen. You can look at it on your phone or your uh, Bible as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to be reading uh, from chapter 1, verse 3 to 7. So I don't have that all on the screen. I just have the first one. But I'm just going to read out verse 3 to 7. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. For just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. Did you hear a lot of repetition in this passage? A lot about comfort, a lot about suffering. You know, if we were all together, maybe I would ask a survey, who feels like right now, they are comforted. They feel really great and at peace. They're comforted by someone. And maybe ha a lot of you would raise your hands. Uh, but if I also ask you, who right now feels like you are suffering? Or you know somebody who's suffering? Maybe a large portion of us or all of us would also raise our hands. Maybe you would say, oh, yeah, I know somebody at school or at work who got, uh, got infected with COVID-19 or somebody who got sick. Or oh, maybe a family member passed away telephone call and some people we know it's been a very tough time because they're in the hospital and nobody can visit them so it means something to us today that god says god does not only comfort you but when we are suffering god is with us if you count how many times the word comfort is used in this passage in this chapter it appears 10 times just in in those few verses, 10 times us. Now it's very important, isn't it, to comfort somebody. Because when we are scared, when we're hurt, we need comfort. And maybe of us being comforted is having a nice ice cream. You know, I remember being a kid, I had to get a shot, you know, or, or I tripped or something. And then my parents or my teachers would say, oh, you know, you feel better, you're going to have a nice ice cream. Oh, that's comforting. Or maybe when you're older, you comfort yourself by something different. But today in the scripture, God says that he is the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles. It is God who gives the best comfort. And you know what? It's not just for us. It's the one God comforts us. He says, we can comfort those in trouble with our comfort comfort because you've received different or who is suffering do you know anyone who is in trouble right now and they need to be comforted by god 
You see, when we are in suffering and trouble, is that Paul uses two words. He says the word trouble and suffering. And trouble can be your trouble. Have you ever been troubled in your heart and you just feel like, oh, something is troubling me? I don't feel well about something. Maybe you had a fight with a friend. Or maybe you often hear about uh, mental health, that some people are just not healthy and they're so troubled. I, re I remember that, that uh, Anna and I, a long time ago, was, was trying to uh, help somebody connect with them. They had depression. They were on medication. And... It was so tough to help them. All we could do was walk with that person through their suffering. There was one time that the person uh, ended up in the hospital because uh, she had harmed herself. And so all we could do is go there to be with her and to say, you know what? We can actually comfort you. No words we say can comfort you, but all we can do is bring you to God. And God is the one who is able to comfort that person. Only God can tell that person that that person, I love you because you are my daughter. You are my son. You know, it reminds me very much uh, of when uh, we first got married, Anna and I, and as my wife. And actually today is our, our anniversary, our sixth anniversary. So thank you, Lord, for my wife and my daughter. I love you. And Today is our sixth anniversary. I remember when we first got married. And it would be great. You, know, you have these dreams of, oh, marriage should look like this. We're going to do all these great things together. And I remember, you know, the first times we really had uh, arguments or disagreements. I said, oh, I need to be able to comfort her and say the right words. And, and so when I first got married, I didn't know how to comfort her, right? And so I would end up talking to her, oh, what's wrong? You know, this was wrong in this situation. And, and how do we make it better? And she would just be quiet. She wouldn't say anything. And she would just look away, right? And because for me, when I want to be comforted, I want to talk about it. I want to listen. I want to figure it out, solve the problem. As a man, that's what I want to do. But my wife, what she wanted is she just needed some quiet time to, to be quiet by herself, to rest, and, and not have to talk through all these things. You see, I didn't know how to comfort her. Maybe some of you have had that experience. Some of you are dating. Some of you are thinking about marriage. And, and, and you know what? As people, we don't really know how to comfort one another. I remember, you know, we would read books, right? You would read like the five love languages and you read about, oh, you know, your love language is spending quality time together or your quality time is uh, uh, your love language is speaking words of affirmation. You would learn these things, right? From psychology, from counseling. Those things are helpful. They're important for us. But in the end, it's God who comforts us. You know, most mornings now we say, you know what? Let's not really talk to each other too much until we've had time with Abba. Because until we've had time with Abba, been in his word, praying, like we very often speak words that hurt one another. Let's have time with Abba first, be in Abba's house before we talk about all those things. Some of us, maybe you're going back to school. You're going to meet some friends and they're going to have issues with certain things. Maybe people will be nervous about certain things. Maybe you want to play with your friends, but you can't play with them. And you want to comfort your friends who've had uh, different issues. But in this time, what we need to do is God is calling us to be the people who come to God, and he's going to bring us and bring our friends back to him so that they can be comforted. You see, because only God, Abba, Daddy, can comfort us. We can't really speak the right words to comfort other people. I love what the scripture says on the next slide. And God says this. He says, for just as we share abundantly in the sufferings of Christ, so also our comfort abounds through Christ. Paul is saying that he suffered a lot, you know. When he was caring for the church, he got beaten up. He got arrested. He got hurt by people. People said, I don't trust you. You're lying. Have you ever been accused by people of lying or not telling the truth or people don't like you? Maybe when you were in school, you were bullied by other people. Paul went through it all. Both physically, he was hurt. Emotionally and mentally, he was hurt as well. But Paul says this. He says, not only do we share in the suffering of Christ, though, because Jesus suffered with us. Jesus was also mocked by other people. Jesus, remember on the cross, people said, you're a liar. If you're really the son of God, get yourself down from here. Jesus knows what it's like to be insulted by other people. When someone makes you really mad, you just want to throw something at them or you want to type something and troll them online. 
Jesus knows what that is like. Paul also knows what that is like. But Paul says, our comfort also abounds through Christ because Jesus knew how we suffer. So he is able to comfort us. And I just really want to encourage you that as you go back to school or your parents are going to work and everybody has a new thing they are doing in this fall season, I want to encourage you today that God is saying, my daughter, my son, I know how tough it is right now. I know the suffering that you and your family have gone through, but I've experienced it too. And I'm here with you. And Jesus says, I will be your comforter. I will be the ice cream that makes you feel better. I will be the huggy plushy doll that you need so you can sleep at night. I will be your morning coffee, which I need every morning. I will be your morning coffee to give you energy and comfort. Just smell my aroma every morning. That's who God is. I want to show you a picture on the next slide of somebody. And this was a, a pastor. He was a teacher. Uh, back in the days of World War II, he was in Germany. His name is Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Bonhoeffer lived in a very tough time when the Nazis were controlling Germany, and the Nazis had co-opted all the churches in Germany, so that everyone had to follow Hitler, who uh, wanted to uh, uh, imprison and kill the Jews. Some of you know this, right, from your studies, and we've read lots about it over the years. And so uh, Bonhoeffer lived in a time when he had to speak up and say, this is not right. And so people wanted to arrest him. So they formed underground churches called the Confessing Churches. And he taught an underground school of students to teach them how to care for the Jews, care for others in this very difficult time. And Bonhoeffer, in this time of suffering, really received comfort from God. In fact, he, he lived in community with a lot of people. And he, he wrote this book called Life Together. And in this book, he talks about what it means to love one another in a time of trouble and suffering. He talks about how to create a caring community. Really, you know, our vision is we are strangers, but we're becoming family in Jesus. And so Bonhoeffer uh, says this about community. So you can uh, press next, Vance. He says this. He says, the person who loves their dream of community will destroy community. But the person who loves those around them will create community. Do you get what that means? He's saying, if we just have this dream of, okay, if my school is going to look like this and my friend's going to do this, my friend's going to do this, and it will be perfect, I want it like this way. That's just one person's dream of community. And maybe you've neglected other people. You know, Hitler had a dream of his community, which was all of the Aryans would be the most powerful people. All the Jews, they're excluded. Or in America, we see, you know, the, the African-Americans or the Hispanic people, they're excluded. You see, we might have a dream of a community, but it actually doesn't help people. It actually hurts them. Instead, what we need is to love people who are around us. That will be God's community. It means right now we're not saying, okay, you know, when our church reopens, when we have all these youth group children's gathering together, then it will be perfect. Or, you know, Gary is a teacher. He's thinking, oh, my classroom is going to look like this. You know, these students are going to be really good. These are the bad students over there. I don't want them. And, and he's going to imagine that. Bonhoeffer says, Gary is going to destroy the community. <laughs> Gary, he's laughing. Because we do that, don't we, when we go to school. Or when your parents go to work, we always dream of, oh, this is what people should be like. But Jesus, I think, would agree with Bonhoeffer and say that if you don't love those around you right now, you're going to hurt other people. Don't think about what church will look like in six months, in a year. Don't think about what school should look like in three months, in six months. Love your classmates for who they are right now. Love your teachers and your janitors right now for what they are doing. Everybody is struggling. Everybody has a story. So love the people around you, and that will create God's kingdom community, God's family. That's what we need to do, church, to be this community of love. I want to finish off uh, by the end of what Paul is saying. So next slide. Paul is saying that he's been through a lot of trouble, like many people throughout history. He's been through a lot of trouble, and Paul says, Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. 
Paul actually went through a lot of trouble. He's writing to the Corinthians, and he's been through riots in the city. He's been arrested. He's been in the prisons. He's been beaten up. You'll read later on. He's been whipped. He's been through a lot of things, almost like death. And maybe in the past half year, some of you felt like you've been through an experience that's like death or like suffering. Paul is saying it's okay because these things have happened so that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. You know, right now, this week, we're trying all these new things on Zoom, and we're going to be going to school and work. Who knows what's going to happen? Today and this morning, we almost couldn't figure out how to get the computer set up, the screen, and we said, we don't know, but we need to rely on God who raises the dead. He can't just fix computers. He can raise the dead. Church, do you believe that? Somebody give me an amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Type it there. Shout it. We say amen that Jesus raises the dead. And we look to our computer and say, oh, our computer is not fast enough. Oh, I can't run Zoom. These are little problems, aren't they? Jesus is the one who raises the dead. All this happens so that we wouldn't be weak and say, God, I'm weak. I need you. And God is going to raise you from the dead. If there's somebody around you who is sick or who is depressed right now, pray for them that in the weakness, God would raise them from the dead. Yes, I see all those amens. Thank you for responding. Amen. We got to be a church that declares uh, God is the one who raises the dead. And finally, let's go to the next slide. God says uh, through Paul that we are going to experience deliverance. You know what deliverance means? It means that you're going to be saved. It means that God will help you through your trouble in the past and in the future. God has always rescued his people. And he is rescuing us now. He will continue to rescue us. Because Paul says in verse 10, can you go to the next slide in verse 10? Paul says in verse 10, he has delivered us from such a deadly peril, from sickness, from disease, from being thrown in prison. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will continue to deliver us again. Paul says this in faith. He says, on him, we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers. You see, God is a God of yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Before COVID-19, Jesus would always deliver his people through thousands of years of history. Today, Jesus continues to deliver us. And in the future new normal, Jesus continues to deliver us to bring us into his embrace, to bring us into his house. And you know what? We get to take a part in that. It says that you will help. You will help us by your prayers. So we need your prayers. We need to pray for one another. As I see those amens on the screen, you know, this is a symbol, a sign of us praying for one another. Say, you know, we're, we're going to pray for the teachers going back to school. We're going to pray for the students going back to school. We're going to be praying for the families who are going to try to work from home and their, par their kids aren't going to school. We're going to pray for all of God's church and those who are not yet part of the church. God will deliver us and we can set our hope on him. So the question for us today, I want to leave with you churches, where have you set your hope? Where have you set your hope, church? Big question. Do you set your hope on the things, you can go to the next slide. Do you set your hope on the things you see in the news? Do you set your hope on your Fortnite account, which got canceled because you can't play it on iOS anymore? Or do you set your hope on, on things you see on TikTok and how entertained you are? Or do you set your hope on what God is doing? right now. God is transforming lives right now. He's going to bring people together in ways you have not seen before. God is going to bring the church together in ways we have not seen before in the last 100 years. God is going to do a new thing. And if we set our hope on Jesus, he can raise us from the dead. He can raise us. Maybe I'll invite the worship team and Josh to come up as we prepare for prayer right now. Because God is saying that he can raise us from the dead. He's saying, church, are you going to set your hope on Jesus? When you set your hope on Jesus, you tell him all the things you are stressed out with. You tell God, God, I'm afraid of the, 
uh, the immunization shot I have to get before going to kindergarten. God, I'm going to give you the stress of having to deal with a classroom and maybe also a virtual classroom. I'm going to give you all of that. Would you set your hope on Jesus? Amen. Amen. Do you want to lead us in prayer? So let's just respond. Not to Uncle, I keep on calling Uncle Iggy. Not to Pastor Iggy and what he said, but to what God has been speaking through him. So we just say, come Holy Spirit, come. Would you minister to our hearts? Just give us something to hold on to, something that you've been speaking to us about who you are. Maybe it's the fact that the word comfort and what you need is comfort from the Holy Spirit. And so we just say, come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, comforter. Comfort our hearts. Give us peace. Maybe you're a parent and you're really stressed out about your kids going back to school. And we just invite the Holy Spirit. Maybe it's your financial situation. Maybe it's just the whole future thing. Whatever it is, we want to just give ourselves over to God and we say that we have hope. We really do have hope in him. Not because of ourselves, not because of anything that we do, but because he is God and he is good. So come, Holy Spirit, come. And we're going to sing goodness of God, which is a declaration of God's faithfulness through all times, through all circumstances. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Let's sing, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. Oh, my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up, until I lay my hand, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. Love you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. Oh, all my life you have been All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. 
one more time we sing. Your goodness is running out. It's running after me. Your goodness is running out. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Oh, your goodness is running out. It's running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. One more time, all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness Amen. So would you receive the blessing? May the Father of comfort fill you with his love and goodness as you enter into a new season. May the Father fill you with courage and strength as you face new challenges. Bless you to receive his grace in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 All right. Oh, we, did it. we did it. The first worship. You can unmute all. You can turn on your camera. Say bye. Bye bye, everyone. Thanks for joining, Thanks for joining us. So good to Love see you all. You. Love you guys. Bye. 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 My new bag.